Hi Trish, thanks for joining us in this time a few months ago. For those of you who don't know Trish, she's part of the 10 o'clock service but has been heavily involved in any amount of things in church. Um, she's very active, very full of God and full of joy, um, a great person to have at church. And uh, I'd like to ask first, um, Trish, you've had in many positions in Merce Union, would you like to share a bit about that? And also, what have you seen God do through that ministry? Yes, I've been involved in the Mother's Union for a long time. It's been a huge part of my life. I joined with my boys, who were quite small, um, when I was living in Cumbria. And then later, when we moved to Scotland, I became even more involved, beginning by being the leader of a small branch in the town of Dunfermline, in the Diocese of St Andrews, Dunkeldon, Dunblane. The Mothers' Union is a huge organisation. It was started in 1876 and um, has spread throughout the world, mostly in the Anglican Communion, but because it spread through um, the Commonwealth, through um, what was then in the beginning, the Empire, um, it is in, in nearly all continents. And it is an amazing opportunity to get to know people in different places and I think that's what inspired me to think that women in the middle of Africa or or the, the jungles of Papua New Guinea or the beautiful seaside places in Melanesia were dealing with the same problems that we're dealing with here in the UK and needing the same support and needing the same help. It's mostly women, but um, the criteria for belonging is just to be um, uh, baptised in the name of the Trinity. So we have men members, but we are dealing with families. We're um, working with families, women and children, Christian families, families of all faiths and none. As you know, if you teach a woman something, she'll teach her children and possibly her husband and before you know where you are she'll have taught the people down the road and throughout the village so many of the things that our women have learned they've spread in their communities when my husband died in 1999 I was a little at a loss of what I was going to do with my life um, and I was praying about this and wondering where I might go and and some of our members asked me if I would be willing to stand for election as the world president, president of four million members, goodness. I had been a leader in Dunfermline, I'd been a leader in Scotland, but this is a total new ball game. And I wasn't sure that God was think that was a possibility. I didn't feel very confident, but it happened. And for six years, I led the trustee board at our headquarters at Mary Sumner House in London and I travelled around the world staying with our members, helping them in the projects they were doing, bringing back the news to the UK, looking at ways to support them that um, would work better than ones we'd done in the past, getting to know people and learning so much as I went along. It was such an amazing opportunity and I thank God for it. It was great for me to hear a few years ago about what Merce Union was doing in, in prisons and would you like to share a bit of what you've done in prisons with Merce Union? Yes, prisons. Yes, the Mother's Union works in prisons all over the world. Um, in fact, we've got several members from here in Ashstead who are working in our local prisoners, prisons here in Surrey. Some of them are doing a crash in um, a men's prison. Others are doing parenting courses. And I go in to send prison, a women's prison, a couple of times a month to help to make uh, cards with a small group, teach knitting with another group and uh, get them to knit squares and things to make blankets for refugees. That's a good thing to do. I enjoy doing that. 
And there's work in prison all over this country and in other parts of the world where very often they have to take in little luxuries like soup, soap and sometimes even food and clothes where prisons are not quite as good as the prisons are here. Uh, that's something that happens in many places. And we are now in a very strange time with the whole social distancing, lockdown. Uh, would you like to share something that you are doing that nourishes your faith uh, during these difficult times? We do live in strange times at the moment. And spiritually, it's been completely different in many ways. Of course, we still continue, or I still continue my normal things, but the things that I could do, like coming to church, are not there. Meeting my friends, they're not there. Going to groups, they're not there. But we've been so well served here in Ashdod by our Sunday services streamed to us. Something each day of the week to look forward to. New people to get to know from other congregations on these little videos. It's been really good. I think my spiritual life has grown since I moved to Ashdod anyway, but I think it's grown too in these last few weeks. For Michael and I, there have been very special times. Of course, there have been difficulties, but we are very blessed in that uh, we're looked after by our family and by our local shops. And we're of the generation, we still have our pension, we don't have to worry about that. So I think for us, it has been in some ways a very special time. I've been able to enjoy my prayer walks around the village. To begin with, I was just walking up and down the roads and praying for the people I knew in different houses, the ones that I wasn't able to visit for a coffee or have a hug, um, and then the ones that I didn't know, and admiring people's gardens and saying hello to everybody I met and chatting with some times with strangers. That has been really quite special. And also, I've got back to writing in my prayer diary, which um, uh, I think it was one of the groups that, that I went to that Sharon runs, where it was suggested. And I must admit, I haven't kept it up very well. But in these last few weeks, I have been doing so. And I think it's something that I'm able to look back on and see how... Uh, my prayers have grown and how they've changed. It's been some time, somehow, quite a special time. And we feel very blessed in many ways. Thanks so much, Trish, for sharing. It's been such an encouragement and there's so much God is doing through your life. So thanks very much. And I think we've all learned a few things and things we can and put in practice and and actually try and live out our faith which obviously is something you're doing thanks